Hi, I'm Cameron Reck. Um, I'm from Sebring, Florida. One time when I was about 12, 13 years old, uh, I ran out to go check the mail and in the mailbox was a uh, random men's health magazine. When I took the mail into the house, I threw the mail on the counter and I quickly ran with that magazine back to my bedroom. I started looking through it and was just immediately captivated by these like gorgeous men in the magazine. It felt so natural to be that attracted to them and um, it was exciting. And then all of a sudden just this wave of fear and terror slammed into me. I was raised in a very Christian conservative household. I was homeschooled um, pretty much my entire like education um, all the way up through high school. I knew that what I was feeling while I was looking at these photos, um, my parents would never be okay with. Um, and certainly the church would never be okay with. And that just started like, like 15, 16 years of just like fear and anxiety and depression. And then when it was time to go to college, I, I still hadn't come out. I wasn't really out to myself. I still believed that I could like fix it. And so uh, I picked a private Christian college to go to because uh, I thought that might be able to help me. My only interaction with the queer community was those, uh, what I felt were moments of weakness where I would download Grindr and I would talk with guys and I would be too terrified to ever meet up with them lie about my name, everything. Um, then I'd feel really guilty and delete it all. And it was just like this vicious cycle. The one really great thing that came out of that school though was I met my best friend Lizzie. So while I was in college, I studied film. Um, and uh, one of the reasons that I actually chose that sc particular school is because they required you to move out to LA your final semester. So when it finally came time for that, Lizzie and I packed our bags, we jumped in the car and we drove out to LA together. I didn't really get the opportunity to actually start exploring my sexuality again until after my first year in LA. I uh, met a guy through an app and uh, we agreed to go on a date and I was very excited. So the night finally came for my first date, my first gay date, really my first date ever. And I had to hide it from everyone. I couldn't tell anyone about it, um, including my best friend. Like I couldn't tell Lizzie. And I actually lied to her, told her I wasn't feeling well um, and that I was just staying in for the night. He showed up and picked me up from my place and I didn't even know how to carry a conversation. I was so freaked out. Um, we got to the Hollywood Bowl for the concert and probably 20 minutes into the concert, I get a text from Lizzie and she says that she's downstairs and needs to come up and grab her guitar that she left in my apartment. I knew immediately that I was, I was caught. I excused myself to the bathroom. In the bathroom, like the, the sweat started. I began to panic, the, I felt nauseous, I started to cry. I was trying to find some way out of this lie. After a good 10 minutes of crying and dry heaving and just losing my mind, I finally texted her and said, I lied, I'm not home. I texted the guy and told him I wasn't feeling well and I immediately called an Uber and just went straight home and shut the door and just broke down and lost it. About a week had passed uh, Lizzie and I didn't talk much during that week. She was mad that I had lied to her. I knew I needed to rip the band-aid off. And so um, I asked if we could have dinner one night. Um, and you know, I get there, I'm shaking, I feel nauseous. I was crying the whole way there. And we sit down and I, I go into the whole story. I tell her that I was actually on a date and I was on a date with a guy and that this is something I've been trying to work through essentially my entire life. I just was sobbing. I was just <laughs> couldn't catch my breath, certainly didn't eat a thing at the dinner. Um, and Lizzie completely understood. She held me, she told me how much she loved me. Um, and then she started talking about her own upbringing and she brought up that um, her dad uh, is gay as well and came out to her when she was younger. A few days later we were hanging out again um, and she brought, uh, she brought this book for me to read um, called Torn, uh, Rescuing the Gospel from the Gay versus Christian Debate. And she explained to me that this was a book that her dad gave her when he came out to her and then she's now giving me that copy. It's written by this guy who, um, who grew up in the same conservative Christian household 
um, knew he was gay, tried to fix himself the same ways that I had tried to fix myself. Um, it all just, it lined up and I saw myself in that book for the first time ever. And the book really laid out how being queer and being Christian can actually go together. I suddenly had respect for my life and, and understanding that God made me the way that I am and I'm not a mistake. I still very much identify as a Christian. I, I, I never tell anyone that I'm religious because I, I don't really like a lot of what religion has brought along, but I am very much still a person of faith. I truly don't know if I would still be alive right now had I not been given that book. If you want to continue to pursue your faith, God loves you. There is absolutely space for you in the church and in the Christian community. There's no reason why you need to choose between being who you are and believing what you believe. They can absolutely coincide.